Let's try not to hit any barriers on the way down here. Oh, we've got traffic. Can I not go down that slip road? Oh, it's not a slip road. It's a... What is that? A little parking bay for the police or something so they can pull over and have a coffee. Well, we got lucky with the traffic anyway. Oh, that's doing luck. What? Well, it's okay, actually. Nope, I did that well. Full points for that turn. Let's have a go outside of this thing. That's weird, isn't it? Look at those red wheels. They look really cool. That is a beautiful sight. I like the way the camera goes on the bridge when there's a bridge nearby. Otherwise it goes down onto the... Actually, this is quite high, and then sometimes it goes onto the ground level. I wonder what the logic is. Starsky and Hutch truck! <laughs> because I'm not going too quickly as well, I'm actually managing to keep it roughly on the road, he says, as he goes into a coach. Where are we going here? Oh, we're going right, okay. Lucky I put the sat-nav back on. Having said that, I've got a sat-nav on the windscreen. I should just turn it off. Let's use the, uh, that's better. Oh, can I make this without hitting that van? That's the question. If I was you, mate, I'd be very scared right now. No, oh, it's just not bothered. Yeah, we've got a sat-nav just to the left of the steering wheel, so I think I'll try and use that. It's only one straight road over the Alps anyway, so you can't really get it wrong. I can see it's going to get noisy. I'm going to have to do a lot of gear shifting on these hills, I think. There was a game came on Steam. I don't know if you saw it or not. A game called X Rebirth. Kind of like a space game. And it was one of those kind of anticipated games. If you're into space sims, obviously, you know. Otherwise, you've probably never heard of it. Anyway, it came out on Steam. And... I'd already bought it. Thought, I'll have a go with this. Let's see what it's like. <laughs> it's quite funny. It came out on Steam. To a torrent of abuse. An absolute torrent of abuse. People complaining about it crashing. Uh, about frame fr FPS issues. About jumping into warp tunnels and, it, and the game just bombing out. All kinds of stuff. So I thought, oh, let's try it. Let's see what happens. Clicked on play. Installed it. Clicked on play. Boom, it just crashed out. I didn't even get to play it. The next day I came home from work, a patch had come out, and it let me start it this time. So I started it and um, had a quick go of the uh, sort of career mode, if you like, or the campaign, I think, as it's called. Had a quick play, got in my ship, but, you know. And I thought to myself, I don't know if you've ever seen X Rebirth or any footage of it or not, but it's kind of weird. Visually, Visually, the game looks really rather nice. It, it, you know, space looks nice, the ships look wonderful, the lighting is great. Visually, it looks nice. And then, you get one of the NPC characters talking, and the lip-syncing is just shockingly bad. Everything from the animation of the people, to the way their mouths move, to the lip-syncing of the audio, to their mouth movements, is so bad, it's laughable. In all honesty, it, 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 it's worse than... I've seen stuff in the 90s that was better than that. Put it that way. That's how bad it is. The characters look like they're out of Half-Life. And the animation is just shock. Shockingly bad. Uh, so you get past that, and I jumped in the ship, flew around, jumped into a warp tunnel, which kind of transports you quickly between uh, parts of space. And then the game crashed out. <laughs> so I went back at onto their website to have a look at the issues and um, there was still a torrent of abuse on Steam and then another patch came out the next day and then it seemed to be oh this is slowing down and then it seemed to be relatively stable oh hello fourth gear what kind of hell is this bloody hell look at this <laughs> Oh yeah, fourth gear, sixth gear over the brow, fantastic. 
If you look on the GPS, you can actually see the destination circle just flash in there. We're not that far away. So anyway, X Rebirth, I haven't been able to play it properly yet anyway, because it still is an unstable game. Um, I don't know. What, I don't get it. I don't know why anybody would release a game with so many problems like that. Not only is there a torrent of hate, there's also... You get... A lot of people just can't get past it. Even if the game is wonderful, they can't look past it. They just don't play it anymore. They just uninstall it. It's just not worth the pain. They need to test games more than that before they release them. It's the same with Battlefield 4 when that came out. In fact, even now I would say the netcode in BF4 is still worse than anything they ever did in BF3. You know? And, and that is shocking because... Actually, a lot of people ask me what the netcode is. What is the netcode? Well, then briefly, the netcode is... Say you see somebody on the screen, right? You see them because their computer has told the server where they are. The server has then told you where they are. Okay? Now, depending on the, the speed of the network between their machine and the server, and between the server and your machine, you can get latency problems. So, you know... You're seeing a person on the screen, you try to shoot them, but they're not really there. They're actually a little bit to the left, because they're running to the left, and there's latency involved. So you try to shoot them, right? So you, you shoot a gun, bullets come out of your gun, your computer tells the server, I've shot these bullets at this direction, you know, they've you know, they're on the way towards this place where I think that player is, and the server kind of computes all that. And because the netcode is so bad, you can end up, all of that collectively is called the netcode. The netcode is what establishes whether or not your rounds hit a player based on where the player is or where it thinks it is, if you see what I mean. The netcode makes the decisions. The netcode is so bad in BF4, you can stand there sometimes and shoot people in their head multiple times and then you die. And you die while the player that you shot is looking the other way. <laughs> or reloading his rifle because the server hasn't told your game that that player has turned around and started shooting you or that he's moved that's the netcode in action and, and in BF4 it's just not good and for a first person shooter AAA blockbuster having really bad netcode is you know it's possibly the worst thing they could do because everything, the whole game relies on having solid netcode you knowing where a player is and a player getting hit when you shoot him is key to an FPS game, <laughs> quite frankly. And how they could have made it, you know, much worse between BF3 and BF4, I really don't understand. I would have thought the netcode would have just been a refinement from 3 to 4. I'm trying to hold some revs here, guys. I'm trying to hold 1500 in 6th gear. I'm probably going to have to drop to 4. I can see it coming. Oh, hello. That was weird. Okay, we're in 2nd now. It's not going into gear properly. What's going on here? I think... I think... I mistimed the clutch change and I think it put it into neutral. I think that's what happened. It's just whole 1500, I think. Wow, this is some serious weight. Actually, let's have a look through that. Look at that. That is funny. At least you can see the trailer, actually. Looking through the back, though, you can actually see your trailer. It's just you can't see the back of your truck. It's a bit weird, that one, isn't it? Look at that. I suppose it's better than not being able to see out the back. I guess what the guy's done is allowed the head movement to turn round, but since that's not really built into the game, it seems to be having some slight issue. But I think he made the right decision allowing it, because it would just feel wrong having a window in the back of the cab, but not being able to look out of it. Oh, this twisting and turning. 
Look at the ooh -hoo -hoo. I need to get the trailer on my side of the road. Let's see if we can hold six through here. Look at this scenery, guys. Look at that scenery. Isn't that wonderful? You can get a passenger side shot. Actually, the passenger view is quite interesting. Oh, I need to get over here. I'm going to cut this thing up. Oh, crikey. Whoa. you got to go really wide. The thing really is oversized. Yeah, I'm just going to hold six. I'm not going to risk anything else. But I've got a queue behind me. I don't care. You take an oversized... Oh, that's no queue. You take an oversized trailer through the Alps. I think you can pretty much expect a queue behind you. Oh yeah, there is. There you go. Is that Majestic behind me? Or is it a Renault? Is it a Renault? It's a Renault! Oh, I am tempted to put the brakes on, except it'll cost me dearly. Won't cost him anything. I don't think it's having six, I think it's four. This is flat throttle, by the way, guys. This is a hilarious struggle. 40 ton... I don't know, what do you think? If you're a truck driver. 450 brake horsepower. I think it was 2,300 newton meters of torque. 40 ton trailer. Would it be this much of a struggle? Is this realistic? I'm guessing it would. I wish that engine wasn't quite so loud, I really do. That's probably the worst thing about this mod, I think. Oh, I think we're going to have to go down to two. We're in four. Are we in four? Can we manage four? I think we can manage four. Oh, ho, ho. look at the Alps in the background. Fantastic. Oh, no, that's a view. That is a view. Right there. I think the choice of red tractors was. That is a, a collision down there. Did you see that? The choice of red tractors with the red truck. Just finesse. Trucking with style. Right, into the tunnel at the Alps. We're supposed to have our headlights on, to be honest. I know it's an American truck, but we are in Europe. Pretty certain through the tunnels I have to put lights on. In fact, with an oversized truck, I should trailer should probably put the lights on anyway. Certainly in Scandinavia, you have to put the lights on all the time, on trucks. And that's full lights, not just side lights, full lights. I know that because I have a lot of Scandinavian people who join my stream and tell me. <laughs> put your lights on, squirrel! Put your beacons on! What are you doing? It's cool, you get to learn all the different uh, traffic laws of all the countries when you're in my stream. <laughs> oh, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. I've actually been in, in tunnels just like this one. Uh, in France, in the south of France. Near, uh, on the south of France on your way into Monaco. Down towards Italy in Monaco. You'll see things just like this. In fact, wasn't one of these in one of the Bond films, I seem to remember? There was a scene where he was driving his car and he's being chased in one of those tunnels right there. Definitely remember that. I can't tell you how far we've got because I've not got my uh, 
full GPS up. But what's making me laugh about this is the fact that I keep seeing the destination point. And yet it's taking so long to get there because of the speed. Actually, look at the lights. The, uh, the dashboard goes like a, a really strong blue when you put your lights on. That's kind of nice. So does the inside really look like this? Sort of wooden and red? Never seen the inside of one of these things. I think I'd have to give this truck, this truck mod, I'll probably give it an 8 out of 10. I think it scores highly because of the detail of it. Uh, it's been very reliable and solid. I've not had any issues with it. Unlike some of the other ones I've tried. You know, the uh, I've tried Kenworths and Peterbilts and they've crashed. Or they've had weird glitches. Uh, it's also compatible with the tyres mod, which is a bonus. Again, links in the video description to both. Um, what else? It's lost points for me. When you look out the back window, it's a bit weird. I mean, it, it, bonus that you can look out the bit, back window, but it's a little bit broken. The worst thing about it is the engine, 1600 RPM. That, that I don't understand. I don't, I don't see how that can be realistic. I can't imagine your truck just suddenly doubles in volume. The engine just suddenly doubles in volume when you hit 1600 RPM. And it's quite frankly a bit annoying because it is rather noisy in my headphones. <laughs> And I'm probably going to have to turn the, the volume down for this recording just so that it doesn't become annoying for you as well. And so it drowns out my voice. Um, interior, very nice. I like the little touches. The the, um, the window wiper, the fan that comes on and the gear stick that moves when you start the engine. That's quite nice. It would have been good if you could actually have the fan on all the time, but... I'm guessing that's a mod restriction, although bonus points for him actually working out how to do that. Because I've not seen that in another game. Uh, he's also done some really nice stuff to do with the, the fenders on the back, the mirrors on the front, and the front grills. I think they're nice options too. So I kind of get the feeling that the guy who did this mod has a real love of this truck. And he just wanted to make the best truck he could. And I think he's done a really good job. You can tell a lot of time went into this thing. Um, actually sod it. Let's give it an eight and a half. An eight and a half out of ten. I would say. So I'm actually running this as well with a new realistic physics. Which I'll also link in the video description. I believe this version is from the original author of realistic physics. Um, Inside the mod pack, there are two versions: one for a four times trailer, one for a six times tr uh, sorry, one for a four times truck, a four wheel truck, and one for a six wheel truck. So you have to enable the right one depending on which truck you use, which is slightly annoying, and I'll probably end up forgetting to do it. Um, but it seems to work quite nicely with this truck. No complaints. I'm also using a couple of trailer mods. Um, the military pack from Jazzy Cat and the uh, trailer mod pack. Which is quite a big trailer mod pack. I actually load the trailer mod pack before I load Jazzy Cats. Um, that's the order I've chosen to do it. So, you know, the military mod trailer pack can overwrite some of the trailer mod packs that I've got. That's the thinking behind that anyway. Uh, in future, I'm going to do a video about mods. Not how to create mods, because I don't know how to create mods. But a, um, a video, excuse me, I've suddenly got the hiccups, a video on um, how to organise mods, because I don't know if your mod folder is anything like mine, but it's getting somewhat out of control. <laughs> uh, and I have actually got some organisation in there, but it's getting crazy, so I've been thinking about a new way of organising it, so what I thought I might do is combine that with a a mod installation guide, because I need to update my mod installation guide. I get a lot of messages about still about how to install mods because the mod installation guide I did is a few months old and people don't find it anymore on my channel so I'm going to do a mod installation guide and a mod organization guide all rolled into one I'm going to do that fairly soon I uh, just need to come up with a new system I think uh, so how far have we got let's have a look we've got 100 k's not far I think I'll leave that on now 
Wow, this thing corners quite well, apart from the trailer doesn't. All 40 tons of it, trying to turn my truck over. So this has been a good little run. I quite like driving through the Swiss Alps. I don't think you, you'll see many of these Kenworths going through the Swiss Alps, that's for sure. But I think, you know, a person who makes his living on the road would very much enjoy a trip through the Swiss Alps, I think. Mountains like this, uh, I've been up into Scotland on my motorbike, and a motorbike is probably one of the best ways to experience uh, the Scottish roads. Uh, pure freedom up there, complete freedom, wonderful, twisty, windy uh, A-roads, no speed cameras in sight, not that much traffic, and the most amazing scenery but really the best thing is the mountains and there are some roads that I went down on my motorbike and if you if you don't know what motorbike I did it on it was a BMW R1200 GS which is the uh, the all-round sports tourer all-terrain bike it's not the adventure version um, which is pure all-terrain this is the the best I think road going bike they make BMW shaft drive an amazing machine uh, but anyway, the point <laughs> the point was that as you're going down some of the roads in Scotland you're in between there's, there's roads that put you in between a valley of two enormous mountains and as you're kind of travelling down this road and you know when you go past something big and it, and it moves really slowly because it is so big you're going down this road at 60 miles an hour, 70 miles an hour on your motorbike and the mountains aren't moving, they're, they're just that big and they're just kind of sat there looking at you or looking down on you and you just feel so small so kind of insignificant in the grand scheme of things it's a bit of a humbling experience um, and just going in between those Alps there just kind of reminded me of that time when I did that I remember sitting riding along on my motorbike and I just kind of sat back on my motorbike and just looked around for a, a minute and just took it all in and just thought wow that is a view sort of committed it to the memory banks and I still have the vision in my head these days I still can remember that day bear in mind a few days beforehand I was spent coming up the west coast of Britain on the motorbike getting the wettest I have ever been in my life and I am you know I've been wet I've ridden a probably about 80,000 miles of motorbikes in all weather, snow, ice, rain, everything and trust me I've been wet on motorbikes but I've never been that wet you know the point where you cannot physically get any wetter if they, if they you know, threw me in a river I would not have got any wetter and I'm not kidding um, so yeah I mean <laughs> it was worth it once I got to Scotland it was worth it it was just just the time of the year it was early October and it was very wet but it was still worth it I went all around the coast of Britain I think I've mentioned this on the stream I can't remember if I've mentioned it before in a video or not but I did the trek all around the coast of Britain three and a half thousand miles uh, started in Greenwich in London and we went out along the south coast down to Cornwall then came up the the west coast of Britain going around Wales up through Cumbria alongside Glasgow and then went up into the Scottish Highlands took a couple of ferries um, to cut out some of the uh, to cross some of the islands I should say there's a, there's a lot of islands in northwest Scotland a lot that's where it all breaks up the British Isles just kind of breaks up up there into a thousand pieces looks like shattered glass and uh, along the top and uh, went to the most northerly point in Britain as well as Penzance, which is the southwest tip, and got my membership to the um, the Lands End to John O'Groats um, Club, which is something you can do. Effectively, it's like going from the southwest tip of Britain all the way to the northeast tip of Britain, or the British Isles, I should say. No, Britain. That's right. It's Britain. Uh, and then came down the east coast, which is far less entertaining than the west coast. Coming down the east coast of Britain, it's a kind of a lot of seaside resorts and stuff, but it's nothing like as good as the west coast of Britain. 
West Coast is where it's at, baby. Anyway, that's a short story about myself and my trips on the motorbike. Did that back in, what was it, 2005, I think I did that. A few years ago now. I don't have my motorbike anymore, by the way. I sold it because I stopped using it. Uh, I used to commute on a motorbike every day. Technically speaking, with my new job, I can actually commute to work now. Part of me would really, really want to, but it's just not economic to, economically viable to have a car and a motorbike, to to effectively fulfil the same job. Um, and I don't really go out riding on the motorbike for for pleasure. There's no one to ride with, and I kind of like riding with other people. Anyway, enough of that. We are in Torino. We made it over the Swiss Alps. <laughs> Just slipped a few gears now and again. Scania. That's a day trip as well. It re I took the day cab. I set off in the morning and we got here at the end of the day. Perfect choice. I didn't have to sleep in my cab as I said I wouldn't. Oh, we're not made them lights, did we? Look at the sunlight coming through the fan. <laughs> Let's take a guess as to where his back end is to my front end of my truck. Let's go with about... Alright, that's about a metre short. Let's have a look. I'd say that was a good guess. That's about a metre and a half, I think. Not a bad guess, though. Come on. Let's go, dude. I want to get through these lights. Don't stop. Oh, for God's sake, don't stop. Don't stop! Thank you. Moving this 40 tonner. is no mean feat. Once you get momentum going in the beasts like this, you just want to keep going. You can really see why truck drivers get so pissed off with car drivers. Doing their crazy antics. Causing them to kill all of the momentum. I think that's what would annoy me most as a truck driver. I'm going through there whether they like it or not. Right, I think we're here. Uh, delivery point is just on the right. There we go. I think I'm going to go over this side. I like how the white... Can you see the white light of the actual truck against the sunlight now. As the sun's setting, it's gone yellowy. It's a nice touch. You can actually see that the lighting changes properly. Right. This is going to be fun. And by fun, I mean... Oh my god. Uh, because I can't really see very much. I cannot see much at all. Right, I need to, in quotes, get out of the truck. No, that ain't happening. That ain't happening. Let's see if we can get more lock on that thing. Might have to go a bit forward again. This is a tricky park. Let's go like here or something. Then try a bit more lock on. I don't know why you'd want to skip this, really. I mean, this is like the most fun, challenging part of it for me. That looks a lot better. I hate it when he does that. This is a bad boy to turn around. Oh no, we've missed that. It's nothing like driving one of the cab overs. The cab overs have a lot better sort of turning. They, they can manipulate the trailer, if you like, a lot, a lot more, um, a lot more responsive because the turning circle is so much sharper. 
Like I've got to push this thing a few meters before it'll begin to change its direction, if you see what I mean. No, that's no good. Wow. I bet it takes a w quite a bit of practice. Oh, I've gone the wrong way. But it takes quite a bit of practice to um, get good at parking with this thing. Yeah, I think we're in with a ship. Oh, no, 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 no. I think I just hit something. <laughs> I think I just fluffed this up. You should try this. This is uh, not easy. Very different. I could get used to it with some practice. But it's. Eh? Hey? Wow. And it's raining, apparently. I need to go over there a lot more. That's what I need to do. And then sort of bring it around. Really narrow, but I think we've got it. Just got to straighten it up now, I think. Yeah. Way more difficult than a, uh, a cab over... It would take me some practice to get used to this. And some of the delivery points I just don't think you could do. They're just way too narrow for a truck like this. I should do it. Woo! Probably caused a bit of damage on the back there. Well, I got an excellent. I'll take that. Bit more on the level, maybe there? 32 Elite. Right then. It has started to rain. Well. I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. I certainly enjoyed making it. That has been the Kenworth W900A. If you install it, it's available from the DAF dealer. Don't forget the uh, tyres mod. Which you can use the tyres on other trucks as well, not just the Kenworth. Use it on any of your trucks. It started to rain in Torino, so I asked to uh, leave it there. But don't forget to like and favourite my video and tell your friends about my videos. Every little helps, as they say, and take care, guys. And happy trucking. <laughs>